Welcome back once again for the programs which are uh, associated with the link to the electrostatics. We have discussed to calculate the force of attraction between the two charges when magnitude of the charges are given and the distance between the charges is given. So we are heading for other problems. Here it is. There are two charges that is two microcoulomb, four microcoulomb are placed in air at the vertices of the equilateral triangle sides are 10 centimeter what is the magnitude of the resultant force acting on four microcoulomb charge so here are the charges that is q1 and this is q2 it is equilateral triangle, the all sides are equal 10, 10, and 10. If you see, this is the magnitude of the resultant force. That is the magnitude of the resultant force acting on charge Q. So here it is. This Q1 is 2 microcoulomb. We are converting into This unit that is 2 multiplied to the power minus 6. This is Q, Q2, it is point, it is minus 3 microcoulomb and it is minus 3 multiplied to the power minus 6. And Q3 is 4 microcoulomb, that is 4 multiplied to the power minus 6. And the distance between them is four one zero centimeter, that is 0.1 meter. So we are asked to find out the resultant force on charge Q3 at this distance. So if you look at first of all, we calculate the force, and the force is F1. F1 is calculated by using this formula. K Q1 Q3 divided by R square and it is 7200 times per minus 3 or it is 7.2 Newton for Coulomb's force between F Q2 and Q3. First we have calculated Q1 and Q3, then we will calculate from Q1 and Q3, then we have calculated from Q. Q2 and Q3, that is this one, Q1, Q3. So it is after putting the values, we have calculated F2, and then you see this is F2 force calculated. Then we will resolve this F1, F2 into horizontal component as well as vertical component. We have resolved it into horizontal component that is F1 next. F1 cos theta 1 and then it is F1 y F1 sin theta 1 putting the all values in the value of the angle you have calculated by putting the, the component of the force that is F1 is 7.2 then is also F1 7.2 so here it is if you put the values that is minus 10 multiply 0.866 so here is f2y that's f1y and f2y both the calculated this one is f2 value and you have placed f2 value to calculate and then you have calculated f2y and here is f2x f2x is calculated by using f2 cos theta 2 after putting the values, you have calculated F2x. You have calculated both F1x, then you have calculated F2x. These are the components of Fx component. And if you look at this is F2, F1y. 
this one is f1 y and then we have calculated f2 y by using formula we have calculated f2 y if you look at you have to add up all the horizontal component of the forces so these are the horizontal component of the forces then you will add up all the vertical component of the forces because f1 y and f2 y are opposite so that's why you are using negative sign so here it is after putting values of f1 y f2 y are the vertical component you have calculated f y and after getting all the components fx component added f1 x f2 x you have calculated fx so here it is f y so after getting this you you will take the magnitude of this force that is fx square plus y square so here it is the fx component is this one and fy component this 15.19 is this one you will take the square of it, these two and then you are calculating the magnitude of the force that is f is equal to 15.7 newton this was the magnitude of the force right so there is another met method second method to calculate and by following this formula it is f1 square f1 square plus f2 square plus 2 f1 f2 cos theta so if you put the values of f1 and f2 here and put the value of cos 16 you will be getting by this way as well so you can also calculate the, the magnitude of the force by using this uh, alternate method that is if you know the magnitude of force f1 and this force is calculated by adding all the components horizontal and this one is also calculated by all the components of the force f1 and f2 after putting the values and the value of the angle you have calculated the magnitude of the resultant force if you look at this was technique which we have used by using this technique you have calculated this is also easier f1 x f f2 x then you have calculated f1 x f2 x f1 y f2 y and finally you have added all horizontal component then you have all already added all vertical component and then after putting the values you have calculated the uh, magnitude of the resultant force there is another alternate method which is more easier you can use this method to calculate uh, the magnitude of the resultant force with this i thank you very much for your time